Dear God, I know I'm supposed to be thankful in all things, in all the seasons, through trials and tribulations, in good times and bad, but here I am in the middle of it, sad and overwhelmed. The world as I knew it is gone. People I love are suffering. The life I walk through is suddenly no more. I can't gather around a table and celebrate family. I can't hold hands with those I care about. Instead, grief and despair seem to be eager dinner guests. God, I don't feel like celebrating. But I sit at my table and I close my eyes, listening for that still small voice. The one that always manages to rise above all the noise of this life. I hear you. Above the sadness, above the fear, above the bewilderment of all that has happened this year. There you are, whispering, be still, and know that I am God. And I close my eyes, and I take a deep breath, and I find my thankfulness in a God who is still in control. Amen. Well, hey, welcome to our online service. And that video was so powerful, right? What a great reminder of what God is doing, even in the midst of the seas. And, and I, I also want to recognize that in this moment, we can still give thanks for what God is doing right now and what he's about to do. So, so grateful that we can pray into that and believe for that. And as we talk today about unity and thankfulness, I, I think it's all going to tie together for us. But before we go there, thanks so much for joining online. We just really want to make Jesus famous. So if you could take an opportunity right at this moment and just share this link online and share with friends and family, because you just never know, you never know that this might be the one thing that kind of creates a relationship or a hunger to know who God is. And so be faithful, be obedient, be evangelistic, and share this. I, I, I'm just... I'm just so convinced it's going to encourage people for the next parts of their life and all the days of their life. Well, I was thinking about this Thanksgiving time, and as we continue, there's a, there's a scripture that I think is so important, and it doesn't really tie to Thanksgiving, but I think it's going to be important as you see me unpack this. In Job 22, 28, it says this, you will decide, say with me, decide, you will decide on a matter, and it will be established for you, and light will shine on your ways. I love what Eugene Peterson does in the message version. He goes like this, you'll pray to him, and he'll listen, he'll help Help you do what you've promised. You'll decide what you want and it will happen. Your life will be bathed in light. To those who feel low, you'll say, chin up, be brave, and God will save them. I love that version. You know, this word in the Hebrew uh, to decide is a word, it's called a gazar, and basically it means to d decree or to declare or to determine. It is the, rooted in the idea of cutting something almost in half to separate it so that you are clear in the decision that you make. Solomon uses this word when two women come to his house and say, hey, you need to decide whose baby this is, and he goes, cut the baby in half, and then you will decide who which baby it is. Now, that's obviously a very strong illustration, and they did not cut the baby in half, by the way. But the reality is, that's how clear of a decision it needs to be. That kind of declaration is to say, I am separating completely so I understand which side I'm on. I am deciding on a matter. I love that. And it will be established for you, and light will shine on your ways. Now, what does that have to do with thanksgiving or being thankful? I think gratefulness is a daily decision. It is something that you have to decide every day, every moment. I'm going to decide on this matter that I will be grateful and I will allow that this gratefulness will be establishing my way and it will provide light onto my path. That's why I think the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray without uh, ceasing, give thanks in all circumstance, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. This is how we are to live. Now, think about this. If, we, if this just came naturally to us, the rejoicing always, praying unceasingly, giving thanks, 
there, there wouldn't be a, a need for the Word of God to command it or demand it in our life. It's not a suggestion, beloved. It is something that we have to choose and decide on a daily matter. God knows, Paul knows, all of God's people know that we need to declare with our mouth gratefulness. It's a daily choice. I think sometimes our ingratitude or lack of gratefulness is a declaration or a decision in itself. When we choose not to be grateful, it may be one of the reasons we are not seeing the fullness of what God would have established in us and through us in our moments to shine uh, on our ways. Now, think about that. The declaration of gratefulness establishes the light of God on a situation. And he is the light, light light-giving path, the life-giving path, the path clearing. He also is the relationship healing. He's the one that when we declare and align our hearts and minds with him, something gets established. And beloved, something gets established that we're separating ourselves from an ungrateful attitude. Now, why is this key? Because I think complaining or being ungrateful empowers an inferior mindset that undermines your faith and disrupts the core of who you are in him and what God wants to do in that moment. When we become ungrateful, we we align our decision on a matter. Check it out. We align our decision on a matter that I believe literally separates us from God and separates God from the matter. Wow. If scripture is true in saying that when I declare something, I am establishing something aligned with the promises of God, that that when I declare ungratefulness, I in fact am declaring something that is saying, I want to separate God from this moment. In this moment, when we are ungrateful, it creates a space and a chasm by choice to not let the light of God, of his hope, his love, his refinement, and his strategy to enter into the situation of a relationship. That's why Job says, you will decide a matter, and it, beloved, will be established for you, and light will shine on your ways. Gratitude establishes something for you in order for the light of God to come. So what do we need to do? We, friends, have to start declaring gratefulness over the matter, over the person, over the circumstance, over the situation. Wow. I was reminded of a story of a young man who had to go to South America because his work took him there. He was there for five years and he missed his family so desperately. And while he was there, Thanksgiving was rolling around. He thought, I'm going to send a gift to my parents because I I love them, I miss them, and I am so thankful for them. So he asked all his friends that were down in South America, what should I send them that would be authentic from South America? And they all hands down said, you must send them the macaw bird. You must send them the most beautiful bird that we have here in our country. He thought, that's a great idea. Where can I get such a bird? So he went down to the store that sold macaws. And he went to the dealer and he said, hey, I'd love to send this macaw bird to my parents. How much will this bird cost? The dealer said, it will cost you $5,000. He said, $5,000? The man said, it will cost you $5,000. Is there anything special about this bird? This bird can speak English and Portuguese. Wow. He stepped back. He thought about it for a moment. He said, ah. My parents, are, they're so worth it. I'm so thankful for them. I want to send this macaw to Los Angeles for my parents. The man said, no problem. It'll be $5,000 for the bird and $5,000 to send them. The man said, wait a minute. $5,000 to send the bird. Yeah, you got to pay $2,000 for the inoculation so that it can get into the United States. And $3,000 just for travel. These, these birds travel in style. Wow, $10,000. The man thought about it for a moment and said, okay, they're worth it. I am so thankful for my parents. I want to send them this bird. 
He gets it all squared away, gives the dealer the cash. The birds get sent. The bird arrives right before Thanksgiving. He calls his parents. He says, he's so excited. Did you get my gift? Did you get the bird? And the parents were so excited. that We love the gift that you gave us so much. We invited some friends over to see this gift you gave us. And the son was like, oh, I'm so happy. And then just in the breaking of the silence, in between that moment of glory and joy and happiness, his dad just blurted out and says, that was the taste bird I've ever eaten son his son took a deep breath said dad I spent ten thousand dollars on that bird that bird can speak two languages and his dad just quickly said well the bird should have spoke up in this moment beloved it is your opportunity if you feel like you're beaten eaten by life speak up it's time for us to speak up about being grateful. I'm convinced that the people of God can decide over this matter in our lives. And it is so key that it is gratefulness that is being proclaimed from our mouth. When I'm ungrateful, it identifies what's in my heart and mind that's dividing us. Check it out. The situation, circumstance, whatever it may be, the person, whatever it may be, ungratefulness reveals something in my heart, not the situation. It identifies what's actually dividing me from God and from you. For instance, if person A or circumstance B is getting on your last nerve, you, your first response is not to be grateful, right? I mean, it's probably number 14 on your list. Because your first response is, I want to be right, I want to get this fixed, and I want that person maybe to even be punished. But what have I told you if the path of declaring thanksgiving is the bridge created for you by God to walk towards unity, healing, and breakthrough? Think of a situation, a circumstance, a person. Right now, think of it. A situation, a circumstance, a person that you are not declaring gratefulness over. It immediately reveals something in you, doesn't it? But let's be honest, it also reveals disunity. Ungratefulness is absolutely one of the greatest enemies of unity. But check this out. When you speak gratefulness over a matter, when you align with God's heart and mind over a matter, it results in unity with him that can be demonstrated to others. Because all of a sudden, your heart is aligned in the right space. And you might be saying, Fraser, 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 take it down a notch. This situation, this person is in my life is so reprehensible, so egregious to my soul, I cannot possibly be grateful. In other words, how can I be grateful when this situation or relationship is such a disaster and does not feel good? I promise, beloved, in this message I'm going to answer this and it's going to surprise you. Let's lean into a biblical example that will show us how to declare gratefulness over huge obstacles. And that's going to be found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 with a king named Jehoshaphat. I'm going to call him Jehosh, like J-Lo, because Jehoshaphat is just too long to say over and over again. So Jehosh, we're going to go look at the story of Jehosh, who had to face a very difficult situation where you might think gratefulness would be the very last thing on his mind to choose. But you will see how powerful gratefulness can be when you're making a decision over a matter. Oh, come on. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. And if you're there, you're not there yet. So just put your hand on your Bible and you'll catch up to me in just a minute. Put your hand on your Bible. Say this with me. Father God, open my heart to receive your word today. Holy Spirit, open my mind to receive your truth today. And extend your hand to your neighbor and maybe to that person or situation that you're not feeling so grateful for. Now, if they're in your house right now and they're sitting beside you, you're going to have to put up two hands in different directions and just believe that the Spirit of God is just going to rebound it into that person's heart because, you know, you don't want to put your hand on that person because then you've identified them. But we're going to say this out loud. Jesus, bless my neighbor to live out your commands today. Awesome. Let's make Jesus famous. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites 
and with them some of the Meunites came against Jehoshaphat, Jehosh, for battle. Messengers came and told Jehosh, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea. Already they are at Hazanar Tamar, that is the En Gedi. And Jehosh, Jehoshaphat, was afraid. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast through all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord from all the towns of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. I love this story. It gets so good. So after this, the previous chapter, we know that Jehosh has led the people of God and nation to just an experience of renewal and revival of their faith. And how many of you know it is easy to be grateful when all around you is good? Woo! I am so happy and thankful when it is good. And we love to say, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We love it when it is good to be thankful. Here's the truth of the matter. God is outside of time. His character and nature of goodness do not change in the limited understanding of my temporal existence. So, beloved, he is always good. But sometimes... All the ites show up. And so my all the time includes all the ites, and it does not feel so good. All things come crashing in. Have you ever noticed that? That calamity always comes with company. What's up with that? For example, you take your car in because you hear one thing knocking, and the, the mechanic says, well, there's about five things knocking. Why is that always true? That when bad things come, they just come in pairs in a party. But here's the thing we got to understand about gratefulness and unity. It's such an important principle. It's a simple principle, but so important that my circumstances do not have to be equal to my understanding of God being good. God is already good. So what is he trying to do in this matter? He is teaching me the deep truths of what it means to be grateful in moments when I feel like I want to be ungrateful. When my circumstances are trying to declare over me that I should separate myself from God, we will see that Jehosh gives us an amazing lesson of what we need to do. When, when we say God is good all the time and when the all the time is full of ites and the all the time doesn't feel so good, we still have to declare that God is good because God is outside of time. His time is not my time. But I will tell you this, beloved, he is aware of what I am dealing with in my time. But watch what Jehosh does. It says clearly in the passage, he was afraid. The Hebrew word is yare. It just feels like yare. He's so afraid, terrified, dreading, causing deep distress is what this word yare means. Let me tell you this. So much of an ungrateful disposition, hear it now, hear it, lean in, is rooted in fear. This idea, we move to being ungrateful quickly when fear enters the picture. Fear of what might happen, fear of what is not happening, fear of who is making it happen, and fear at its root, beloved, is control. When we feel out of control, we make declarations in order to, declare, to control the fear. But we're trying to declare in our flesh something that we have no capacity to have strength to defeat. So we must declare gratefulness to God as he can enter into the situation. And here's the thing. This control thing is it's so hard. Because we're afraid of what this circumstance or this person is doing to us. So therefore, I in my control will declare ungratefulness as if I have power. But you do. Because when you declare something, you're establishing something. So when we are hit with a situation of the ites coming at us in our life where it doesn't feel so good and we declare out of fear, ungratefulness, you've made a decision on the matter. And check it out. You've left God out of that decision-making process. That's what ungratefulness does. Uh-oh. 
in my fear, I will decide on a matter, and that matter will then be established on the path that I will take with you and over my circumstance. Job 22 reminds us again, you will decide on a matter, and it will be established for you. The light will shine in your way. So what does Jehosh do? Two things. One, to seek. Jehoshaphat was afraid. He set. That word literally means he surrendered to himself to seek, which that word means to inquire with care, to investigate with, check it out, with intention. So Jehoshaphat's afraid because, man, Jehoshaphat's afraid. So-and-so is afraid. da da is afraid. I'm afraid. All God's people get afraid. That's part of the deal. What we do in that fear makes all the difference on being grateful or ungrateful. So he surrenders, and with intention, he seeks the Lord. The second thing he does is that he proclaims. He proclaims, and that word proclaim means to call, to shout, to appoint, to announce. It's, it's speaking it out. It's, it's saying. It's not inside. It's not in your head. Not in your quiet voice in the corner of a room. It's declaring, I will be grateful in this moment. And what he does is he, he seeks the Lord while he's afraid and he begins to proclaim because he wants to declare over a matter the establishment of God in the midst of it. Woo! That's so good. And in this moment, we have to come to the same place when circumstances, situations, tensions rise up. All of the ites of life, you know who they are. They might be right around you right now. All the ites of your life are rising up against you. You have to resist the need to control by being ungrateful in your fear. Rather, you must surrender your control to the one who wants to enter in and declare and establish his motive in this moment. Wow! That his goodness is not predicated by your predicament. He's outside of time. His goodness needs to show up and show off. But it is a conduit of connection of my gratefulness to God that he will then establish himself in that moment. Woo, come on now. If someone was here, they'd shout because I'm about to get in it. See, beloved, we can lament and we can grieve and we can get angry. We can be frustrated. We can get afraid. All of those things can happen when the ites show up. All of them can happen. I'm not saying that you just enter into the land of ites and everything's perfect. I'm telling you, yeah, you'll lament and you'll grieve. You'll get angry. You'll get frustrated. You'll get afraid. But don't let it lead you to ungratefulness because it's a sign that you're trying to control the matter. Instead, lean in like Jehosh does and declare God. I'm going to declare God will establish himself in this situation over this person, over this feeling. And I will surrender my control into your hands because God, why? You are good. When we don't surrender, it is not only an indictment against God's goodness. It is a revelation that I'm not so sure I trust you, God, in this matter. Ungratefulness reveals my level of faith in a moment. And let me just say this again. Beloved, we don't have to be grateful for the messes. But we must be grateful for the majestic who knows the mess we're in. And that's different. Could it be when it's not going our way that it's out of our control? It's still a revelation of his goodness towards me. And that he is teaching me something so profoundly deep in the shaping and refining of my soul on how to steward difficult times. Check this out. So that I might increase the stewarding of plentiful times. See again, it is easy to thank God when things are good. But it is also easy to forget to thank God when things are good. And we need to come to the conclusion of understanding that in these moments, when the ites come against us, could it be that there's, a, there's something deepening into my soul, that I am going to understand who God is, that in loss, I understand how to steward loss and rejection and feelings and circumstances that I don't feel grateful for, so that I may learn how to steward the deeper places of the plenty that are about to be in front of me. If I can trust God in my loss and still be grateful, that I am sure to be able to trust God in the stewarding of my gains. And could it be he's just waiting for me to learn that? 
And you might ask, well, what does it have to do with unity? It has everything to do with unity. When I can learn to be grateful for you when you have hurt me, let me down, come against me, and, you know, sang a sad song towards me, any of the it behavior that can come, that when I choose to declare over a matter gratefulness, I'm going to choose beyond the circumstance to see how God sees it. Let's just be honest, beloved. When God saw from the cross dealing with all of those ites that we face every day, his mouth declared, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Jesus was not grateful for the sin coming against them and the mess. He wasn't grateful for that. But what he was grateful for, what he was about to do, as he would declare in a matter to establish what his heart and love could do in grace over any situation. In his goodness, Jesus is not reduced to the moment, but lives from a place of his goodness to be grateful for the hope of who he sees we can become. See, it has everything to do with unity because from the cross, God would declare his goodness upon us. That the sin that caused the Savior of the world to die on the cross, that mess... Even still in the character and nature of God's goodness, he says, I'm still grateful for you and I will still die for you. Because why? Because when something happens that causes us to move to ungratefulness, what Jesus does is says, I will refuse to see it or see you as my enemy. When I can live into the goodness of God and be grateful for him, then I can live out this truth in front of you. Doesn't it just reveal when I am ungrateful towards situation, circumstance, who I am, not who God is? Doesn't it just reveal what I feel about our relationship? But man, when I can still see and live into the goodness of God, even in the midst of the messes and believe for his majestic to show up, then I can live this truth in front of you. And I, 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 I just dare you to see what happens next time in a relationship when you feel ungrateful and you declare over them the goodness of God's graces, being thankful for them and what might happen. And, and, and check out what might happen in their heart and behavior. So think about this. Think of any situation you're at. You're sitting at the dining room table and something happens. You're like, I'm not so grateful for that situation or that comment or that situation. What would happen if in the goodness of God, you just started declaring over them, I'm just so grateful for you. I'm grateful for the goodness of God in you. And you're like, Fraser, this person just rejected you, just said something mean against you. How about living at a different level? So if they want to declare disunity, that doesn't mean I have to declare disunity. I get to declare the unity of my love for God in this moment because I don't see you as my enemy. I see you as someone that God loves. And I'm grateful for that. This is a hard message, but it's a good one. I think Jehosh's prayer just strengthens this whole point as he keeps going on. I'll try to get this wrapped up in just a minute here. He, he gathers all the people and notice this. You know what? You can't face these situations, all these ites alone. Community is so important, beloved. We got to be together, stay together. We can't run for the hills. We got to connect. And the ites are coming. But man, listen to Jehosh's prayer as he gathers the young and the old and the far and the wide. And he says this, these three verses, 6, 7, and 12, he does this statement. Are you not the God in heaven? Did you not drive out blah, 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 blah? Verse 12, will you not execute your strategies? When you learn the prayer of are you not, did you not, and will you not, you start declaring the gratefulness of God in every situation. Are you not capable as the God of heaven? Did you not already take care of that situation over and over again? And this is the hope of it. Will you not? When you start declaring these kind of promises, they begin to exist and establish something that creates a path of God's goodness to show up. What if we approach the situation that way instead of feeling ungrateful, being controlled by fear, to lead, let, let fear, instead of push me away from God, chase me into the arms of God and declare, are you not, did you not, will you not? What? Come on. What if the people of God united under the declaration of this through all ages, fasting and praying and worshiping, say, God, are you not, did you not, will you not? Or are we stuck in such an ungrateful mindset that separates and divides the proclamation and the people and leaves it hanging with this statement? Are you? Did you? Will you? Do you see the posture difference? Are you? Did you? Will you? That's what an ungrateful prayer and attitude looks like. 
a grateful prayer and proclamation is, are you not able? Did you not already do this? And will you not establish this, God? In the midst of this prayer meeting, God will send a prophetic word to you and sustain you as he did Jehosh, Jehoshaphat. Second Chronicles 20.15 says this. The prophet shows up. He says, hey, listen all Judah. And let me just tell you this. The prophet's not going to show up until you're ready to declare the goodness of God in a moment. Because then it's just a wasted word. But these are people seeking and proclaiming who God is in the midst of it. They don't know what the strategy is, but they're believing for it. And here comes the strategy. Listen, all Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat. Those say the Lord, thus says the Lord to you. Do not fear or be dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but whose? But God's. Where are the prophets of gratefulness? That's what we need. We need some priests and prophets that are going to start proclaiming, Hey, beloved, do not fear or be dismayed. This great multitude of ites that are coming against you that was causing you to be ungrateful, don't be afraid. The battle is not yours, but God's. It goes on to say in verse 17, the battle is not for you to even fight. Take your position. Stand still. See the victory of the Lord on your behalf. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and check it out, beloved. The Lord will be with you. Who is with you? The Lord. Who am I grateful for? The Lord. And as it wraps up, check this out. The people of God have worshipped. They're on their face. 2 Chronicles 18 and 19. Jehoshaphat bows down his face to the ground. Then all of Judah bows down. Then the inhabitants of Jerusalem all fall down before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And the Levites and the Kohites and the Korahites stood up, up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. See, in this moment of gratitude, I start declaring through my worship, I bow down, I fall down, I stand up, but all of it I'm declaring with a loud voice in praise. I am declaring, God, you, you are good in this moment. I'm going to declare your goodness to establish in front of me the path that only you can light up. Man, I'm telling you, beloved, just this discipline could change the whole game. From a place of unity and prayer and worship and prophetic proclamation. Let me tell you, so much of this whole scenario of us being a people that maybe, I'm saying all kinds of people, not just you people. All kinds of people of being ungrateful doesn't allow us to connect in a way to worship and to prophesy and to declare and to fast and to bow down. We want COVID to be over. Maybe we need to fast for it to be over. We want the doors to be open. Maybe we need to fast and pray the goodness of God over this moment. Get some prophets of gratefulness down here and declaring what God can do in San Bernardino County and California and across the country and around the world. Second Chronicles 20, 21 says this. When he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy splendor. Oh. And check out. What this group of people are called as they went before the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for steadfast love and do his heart. They're, they're a holy, splendorous people. And what's the phrase that they're called to do to go into battle with? Give thanks to the Lord for steadfast love endures forever. They begin to declare something of the goodness of God to establish something that his path is about to illuminate. When the people of God can unite and proclaim with a loud voice, no more murmuring, no more criticizing, no more ungratefulness, but to give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever, what can happen when a people of God do that? The scripture goes on to tell us the answer to this, beloved. The Lord goes ahead of you and he sets ambushes. All the ites start fighting amongst themselves and they destroy themselves utterly. Which is a powerful word and warning against an ungrateful spirit. You will just consume yourself because it's an inferior complexity in your mind of who you've been called to in God. 
God calls you to be a grateful people, not an ungrateful people. And when you're ungrateful, you war against yourselves. And that's not what the world needs to see right now. The world needs to see the people of God uniting with this one loud voice. And the scripture goes on to see what the Lord will do. It just gets better. This, this space where they decide, instead of being an ungrateful people, they will go out as a grateful people. A little scary, facing an army three times their size, declaring the gratefulness of God. And I want to tell you this. I think it's so important that we recognize that this army was three times their size. Their size but check it out. After the, the Lord set the ambushes and all of them fought each other and destroyed themselves utterly, it says in Scripture it took them three days to receive all the benefit and plunder from the land that, of those who were attacking them. Check that out. An army three times the size of you comes against you. But when you proclaim God's goodness and gratefulness and you stand united with one another proclaiming his goodness and gratefulness, what happens? Three times the amount will come back to you. So I just want to declare over you in this moment that as we become a people of God, that there will be a threefold exponential blessing that will come upon your life. I really believe that when we are heading in the right direction, fear will always come. Ungratefulness will always come. But we can become a people of gratefulness to declare over a moment. And when we declare over that moment, it utterly releases the path and the light of God in that moment. And when that happens, beloved, something happens to the, in the atmosphere and the environment. And that which is coming against us is pushed back. And then there's a threefold blessing that it takes us three days to reap it. And by the fourth day, all we have to do is go back to what's called the Valley of Baraka, and it's the Valley of Praise, because all we can do is to give thanks to God. But what we do in this moment, when we are feeling ungrateful, we are declaring a promise ahead of time, saying, God, I know there's a valley of blessing for me beyond this, but the pathway and the bridge is not through a person, it's not through a circumstance, it's through you, and I'm believing I'm declaring it and establishing it in gratefulness, because the blessing is about to come. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, Aaron, come on up here. Can you come up here? Come on up here. We're going to close this thing up. Oh, I'm fired up, man. Because I feel like this is a season of gratefulness. I want to declare every life. So get in your posture. Get ready. Open your hands, your heart. And you got to decide, is fear and ungratefulness establishing your path right now. And if it is true that that is true, then beloved, heed the warning that scripture says it doesn't end well there. It's an ambush against yourself. Literally destroying yourself. So why not set that aside today? Move it over here and say, well, God, today I'm going to be a grateful person. I'm going to declare with my mouth to establish a path that you're going to illuminate of gratefulness. Because I know just beyond, Lord, there's a valley of blessing. And I'm going to spend time there worshiping you and thanking you. And God, who knows, the next round, there'll be a whole different kind of ite. But I'm going to build my spiritual muscle of gratefulness over and over and over and over again. But I can't do it by myself, God. I need you, and I need you. I need you, and I need you. As we worship and proclaim that we will give thanks to God. For he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever if you're here today and you're watching and you're listening I want you to know that in your season and your circumstance begin to declare gratefulness over it and let's see what the Lord will do in the valley of praise let us see what he will do in a threefold expression of his goodness upon your life align your heart and mind what in front of you is not your enemy what you have to recognize, it's an opportunity to see God's goodness show up and show off. I really believe that. I believe in this season, God is ready to do some kind of breakthrough.
Lord, it takes a people surrendered, set of mind to proclaim and declare that God is good. Is that you today? I'd like to just close with 1 Thessalonians one more time. Because I think it's an important promise. But right before Paul prayed that incredible prayer of, uh, you know, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, he says this. I want to urge you, beloved, to, <laughs> this is so great, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted. Wow. Help the weak. Be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Let this passage is often the most neglected passage before the one that we always say, pray without ceasing, rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances. This is the background of that. This is an attitude and behavior of what it means to be a grateful people to declare over one another an establishment that only God's goodness will be available for all. So, Lord, in this moment, let us be a people on this Thanksgiving week and all the days of our life. Learn how to rejoice always, to pray continuously. But, God, that we will train our hearts and our minds and our hands to give thanks in all circumstances and declare it and establish it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said Amen and amen. May the peace of Christ be yours all the days of your life as you walk in a spirit of thanksgiving. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving this week.